Hi there, welcome to this quick introduction to Brand Voice from Read Words. My name's Mike Reed. I've been a copywriter for over 30 years now, working in advertising, design, and branding. And since 2013, I've been co founder and executive creative director of Read Words, a verbal branding and copywriting agency. We work all over the world with a huge range of clients, from household names to startups, cultural organizations, and nonprofits. That variety is very important to us and enriches every project we take on. In this video, we're going to focus on brand voice and how you make yours as powerful and effective as possible. So what makes a great brand voice? We could spend a whole day talking about that. So in this video, we just want to look at some absolute fundamentals and things to watch out for. Over the years, we've developed voices for a huge range of brands. And the first question has to be, why? What are these brands gaining by paying so much attention to their voices? Isn't it enough just to get your message across in a clear and friendly way? Well, that's a good start, but your voice can do a lot more for you than that. Here are some examples of brand voice from four hugely successful brands. I've stripped out any visual clues as to who they are, but I'm willing to bet you can still name at least three out of these four brands and probably all of them on the basis of their words alone. Taste the feeling. It's like milk, but made for humans. Light. Years ahead. Find your greatness. How did you get on? The brands are, from the top, Coca-Cola, Oatly, Apple, and Nike. But I'm pretty sure you knew that. And you knew it because their voices are so recognizable and consistent. And that's what a well-defined and disciplined voice can do for you. The way you speak helps get you noticed. It helps people remember your brand and associate it with qualities you want to be associated with. And a consistent voice builds trust in your brand. After all, if a person spoke to you in a different voice every time, you wouldn't trust any of those voices, would you? In other words, your voice is a brand asset, just like your logo, colors, or typefaces. If it's used creatively and consistently, it can help your brand develop all the right associations. Used carelessly, it's equally capable of undermining those associations or creating negative ones. For example, this campaign is from a few years back but it's a good example of a major and popular brand doing itself major damage by changing its voice. Back in 2015, Airbnb ran this snarky campaign all over San Francisco, telling the city how to spend the taxes it paid each year. In fact, it was all part of a campaign to combat Proposition F, an initiative to restrict exactly the sort of private, short-term rentals Airbnb depends on. It's fair to say the campaign did not go down well. In fact, there was a huge backlash, both from private citizens on social and from local, national, and even worldwide press. You might say this wasn't really about voice or copywriting. It was about Airbnb failing to read the room and making what the press called a tone-deaf choice. And of course it was, but those things are all part of the voice. Because a brand voice isn't just nice copywriting. It's not just making copy sound friendly or funny. It's about communicating your message in a way that reflects the character of your brand and which is tailored to the audience you want to reach. In other words, it's everything you say, the way you say it, and who you say it to. Which makes your voice arguably the richest, most sophisticated, most powerful expression of your brand that there is. But fulfilling that potential depends on two things. Being crystal clear about what your brand is and being hyper-disciplined about your voice. If Airbnb had nailed these two things in 2015, it could never have made that mistake, unless its brand promise was to royally piss off the city of San Francisco. Compare the Airbnb example to a brand like Oatly, which has used its voice so effectively to create a category-defining brand. Whether you love it or it drives you up the wall, the Oatly voice is unmistakable and memorable, and it helped carry Oatly to a $10 billion IPO. That's not just down to the voice, of course, but it's an especially good example of how powerful voice can be. Not just because it's funny or provocative, just as important is that it's incredibly consistent. If they had a few wacky posters but sounded generic everywhere else, this brand would start falling apart fairly quickly. But Oatly are watertight in carrying their voice through from out of home like this to packaging, social, the website, even the cookie warning has an Oatly twist to it. Maybe you think only wacky brands like Oatly can do this sort of thing, but any brand can. It's not about being funny. Your brand might never so much as raise an eyebrow because that wouldn't be right for it. 
What matters is that you consider and craft the voice at every touchpoint, so you're always speaking in a way that reinforces the promise and character of your brand. So where do you even start? Well, every voice is different, of course, but there are some shared fundamentals. We're going to look at four critical points. The first of which is be true to your brand, or rather be true to your brand. This might sound obvious, but a lot of companies still look at other successful brands like Oatly or Apple or Nike and think they should be speaking more like them. But the real lesson of these brands' success is not that you should sound like them, it's that you should sound distinctively and consistently like you. And you can only do that when you have a really clear understanding of what your brand is all about, what it stands for, the promise it makes to the world, its personality or character, what makes it special. A lot of our work at Read Words begins here with strategy, because finding exactly the right words to describe your brand helps refine your sense of it, as well as creating the best possible foundation for everything else. The clearer and sharper your strategy is, the easier it is to express it. And when we think about voice, the character of your brand is especially important. Just as with people, the way brands speak is driven by character. So how would you describe your brand's character? It might be one word, it might be two or even three. That's probably the limit. Simplicity is best, especially when you want people to keep these descriptions in their heads as they write. But it's more than character. It's about every aspect of your brand. What do you stand for? What sort of people do you hire? And what are they like to deal with? Why do you work the way you do? All of these things will feed through into your messaging and your voice, the things you say and how you say them. So let's assume you've done that work. You've answered all these questions and you know what you're all about, and you've captured it in precise, inspiring words. How do you build a voice that brings it to life? Our next big tip is to get practical as soon as you can, by which we mean start writing stuff. The sooner you can get away from abstract discussions, the better. The fact is, everyone will have a different idea of how your brand should sound. It might be relatively easy to come up with some big words to describe the voice in broad terms, but what do they mean in practice? You could spend ages discussing that in the abstract. But by testing actual written examples, you'll quickly get a handle on what feels like the right expression for the brand. Discussing them will sharpen your sense of why something's right or wrong for you, which in itself helps crystallize your understanding of the brand. This process also creates a shared, agreed sense of the brand and its voice, which is invaluable when assessing live comms work down the line. For example, we often use an about us type introduction to test out different ways the voice might operate. Here's a made up example. Let's say you're our client. You're building a new VR gaming brand which aims to open up this technology to new audiences. In vPlay, Teams of players can not only play pre-written games, they can also create their own. In your strategy work, you've boiled the brand down to four key words, community, adventure, imagination, and simplicity. But what's the character of this brand? What are the most important messages? How should it speak? Those four words could take you in all sorts of directions. So rather than just talk about them, let's try some out. So we get practical to try out different directions. We'll lean into different territories, both in terms of the messaging and the character. And then together we'll pull them apart, looking at what works, what doesn't, and why. That'll help us pin down exactly what sort of brand this is and what the voice should be. Inevitably, it will combine elements of all our options, and maybe we'll want to develop some more. But the key point is we're making progress. We're not getting tangled up in ifs and maybes. We're identifying specific forms of words that are right or wrong. We're sharpening the picture. And we're getting everyone's buy-in and agreement on the way forward. Also, it's fun. Pretty soon, we'll have a single piece of writing that we're all agreed on and that we can build out into a full brand voice. So, what's next? Bring everyone in. Now you've got a voice, you need everyone to use it. I talked about consistency at the beginning. That doesn't mean everyone has to speak and write like scripted robots. But it does mean that everything your brand says should feel like it's coming from the same place. And that can't happen if the only people thinking or caring about voice are the brand team. 
Language is the one thread that binds every part of an organization. Every department, every discipline, every team, they all speak for the brand in one way or another. Whether it's a customer service call, in CRM emails, talking to suppliers and partners, internal comms. If you're speaking on behalf of the brand, you should sound like the brand. Of course, that's easier said than done. You can't expect everyone to know why this matters, especially if they're not part of brand or marketing. They may well see it as an imposition, as they have plenty of their regular work to do without worrying about becoming a copywriter too. So you need to introduce it clearly and positively, explaining what brand voice is and why it's so important. Depending on the type and scale of your organisation, this could mean all sorts of activity. Team workshops, a town hall type presentation, a message from the CEO. The most important thing is that everyone hears why the voice matters and that it's up to everyone to make it work. And how do they make it work? Well, that's the next thing. You also need to help people put the voice into action. They need guidelines, of course, and I'll get to those in a second. But practical training is invaluable too. Of course, that takes a bit more time and budget, but our experience is that it transforms the process of embedding a voice. The worst thing that can happen at the end of a voice project is that you get a nice set of guidelines that sit in a folder somewhere and are gradually forgotten about. That might tick a box on a to-do list, but it changes nothing. Training can be the difference between that and a truly active living voice that makes a real difference. Which brings me to my fourth and final principle. If you want people to use your voice, you have to make it easy for them. People have enough to do, especially, like I say, those who aren't close to brand and marketing and quite rightly think they have enough to do already, thanks very much. The good news is, if you do it properly, voice can actually make people's lives easier rather than more complicated. After all, it can be daunting having to write, say, a presentation or a report, even an email on behalf of the brand. Most people are not copywriters after all. Lots of people really agonize about this stuff. So having some really clear practical guidelines is actually helpful. Rather than creating extra work, it makes doing what you have to do anyway easier. But only if those guidelines are clear, simple, practical, and memorable. And so many just aren't. You may well have seen tone of voice guidelines that are really little more than some big words on a couple of pages. I've made up this example, but you know the sort of thing. Three or four big abstract words and not much in the way of what they mean or how to use them. Human is a classic one. After all, do we mean human like this? Or this sort of human? Or human like this? Of course, human is a hopelessly generic word. We're all human, and we're all different. Even so, you'll find it in endless brand guidelines. Full disclosure, we've been cornered into using it ourselves once or twice. What people usually mean is friendly or conversational, both of which are also pretty broad and abstract, but at least they're an improvement. More than once, our brief from a client has been Someone else did these guidelines and we realised no one in the company knows what to do with them. Which, of course, means either that people don't use them at all, or they all use them in different ways, neither of which does your voice any good at all. What we need to do, again, is get practical. Practical and specific. When you're writing, there's a huge range of tools and devices you could use. This is clearly not the full list. Which ones are the right ones for your voice? Give those to your writers and show them how to use them. And just as importantly, keep it simple and clear. For example, these are two instructions from the real-life guidelines of a very famous brand. I won't say who to spare their blushes. They get full marks for specificity, but how many people in your business would know what these specifics actually mean? Remember, most of the people who use your voice guidelines will not be writers. Most people are not that confident with writing which is why they fall back on safe, generic, corporate language, very understandably. Your guidelines need to make the job of writing easier and more enjoyable, not bombard people with even more jargon. We often say that guidelines should work like a recipe book. They should set out the specific ingredients of your voice and explain how you put them together, as simply, clearly and memorably as possible. Here's an example of how to do it well. This is the digital bank Monzo. This isn't one of ours, by the way. They did this in-house. 
Monzo has a deliberately straightforward simple voice in any case, but the guidelines themselves make the voice easy to use. Here you can see how they start with the broad principles that describe the voice, as they say, in a nutshell. But even here they're being clear and specific. These are not single abstract adjectives. And then they back those principles up with clear, simple tools and instructions, or, if you like, ingredients and method. And lastly, you need examples of the voice in action, as many as you can get in. You can see this in one of our projects, for sea life. Again, we start at the broadest level. We usually have something that sums up the whole voice in a few words, which helps the writers remember the essence of it. For sea life, we use this phrase, dive in. It captures the energy, positivity, and fun we wanted to have in the voice. And in this opening slide, we flesh that phrase out a bit. Then we get practical, giving writers the ingredients they need to put the voice together. There's more detail in the full guidelines, of course but you get the idea. And then, as I say, lots and lots of examples. Often you can compare the new voice with the old one to show how the new one better reflects the brand and does the things you've strategically set out to do. So here, for example, the old poster said, Atlantic depths. The Atlantic is the world's second largest ocean and takes up 20% of the Earth's surface, which is pretty bland and boring. The new one is much more dive in. It says, Fancy a glass of Atlantic water? Yuck, no thanks. The Atlantic is the world's saltiest ocean. Sounds pretty gross, right? But not for our curious creatures. Get ready to say hi. That shows how you can use some of the tools that we were setting out at the start. It's not enough just to show a before and after, though. It's also important to explain what's changed and why it's a better fit for the brand. So there you have it, four critical principles for building your own brand voice. Be true to your brand, get practical fast, bring everyone in, make it easy to use. A final thought and an important one. A brand voice like the brand itself is never done. Brands are living things and they need nurturing. Once you've set your voice up, check in with it regularly. Ask people what's working well and what's not. How does the voice need to adapt? Where are the wrinkles? If you're doing it properly, then you've made a decent investment of time, budget, and energy in getting your brand voice off the ground. Nurturing the voice makes sure that investment isn't wasted. Because if you're not looking after it, it's all too easy for people to slide back into old habits, and the voice gets more and more diluted until it's barely there at all. There you have it. Thanks so much for listening. And voice is just one of the ways we make brands and businesses stronger through language. If you'd like a word about your words, do get in touch anytime. We'd love to hear from you.